Hello everyone, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together in the evenings here for about an hour. And I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you guys can see the whole uh, whole shebang uh, and you can work on the projects with me. Uh, right now we're working on the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. This is the book. Uh, it's by Pat Sloan and Jane Davidson and it features over 80 different designers. Uh, we are working on Catnap again today. So this is how far we are. I'm going to work on the embroidery of the little kitty uh, some more. Chad, this is going to be Chad, my parents' little kitty. Uh, I posted a picture of Chad up on my Facebook page, on, pe on the Penguin and Fish page, uh, before or during uh, Thanksgiving. So if you guys wanted to see what Chad looks like, my little Chad kitty, uh, you can check it out there. <laughs> so I hope everyone had a great holiday. And uh, if you're not from, from the U.S., thanks for being patient with me. I have, I'm back after a few days off for Thanksgiving, and I'm ready to get back stitching. So I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get going tonight. Nice to see everyone again. All right. Oh, Gretchen, you saw the cute kitty. Cute little Chad. I miss him already. He's an outdoor uh, kitty, so... Uh, we don't, he's just kind of around, so we, we get lucky when we, when we see him. All right. He is, I mean, he's kind of, he's an outdoor kitty, but, you know, he sticks around. He knows where the food is and where all the, the petting is. All right, I'm going to start a new thread here. And uh, uh, I'm just, we're using one, one thread at a time, so I'm just going to, I have two threads together here yet, so I'm gonna just grab the one and pull it out. And then let this other one just relax behind again, and we'll use that guy later. Ooh, Cindy in South Dakota. Hope you're <laughs> staying uh, warm there. We've had a little bit of a cold snap here, but really it's uh, still only um, I mean, it's still above, above zero yet, so we're, we're good. Once it hits below zero, then, then, you know, then we can call it cold. Although, man, it's been like in the 20s and that's been brisk. Brisk going outside today. Oh, it's probably a lot colder by you, Cindy, huh? So let me get let me know what you guys did for Thanksgiving. I visited uh, my family and and little Chad, of course. <laughs> uh, my uh, some extended family came over and they played some Sheep's Head. I don't know if you guys are familiar with with that game. It's a card game. All right, we're doing the stem stitch again. I always, I'm more comfortable going left to right on the stem stitch, so we're gonna do it from this side. And I kind of, um, you know, you have a, a decision when you're doing stem stitch if you're gonna put the thread above or below as you stitch. And I go in the direction of the shape. So like the shape, if you look at the kitty shape that we're gonna be following, it's kind of, an outside curve or the curve goes this way and so I'm gonna make my thread go that way too so it's gonna go up above in this case once it goes inside you know here it dips in a little bit uh, but I think we'll be it's more of a straight line so I think we'll be fine stick staying here so I'm going about a stitch length away and then popping back up on the line oh cold there in Texas too yeah, I'm not sure Texas is getting down to uh, 20 degrees like it is here. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, 50s is probably chilly too, or maybe it's maybe it's uh, cooler than 50 there. I don't know. <laughs> 
Oh, you're not getting the notices. Okay, well, Bonnie, I'm always on at 8.30. Uh, otherwise, just make sure uh, when you click like on the Penguin and Fish page, uh, next to the like button is a kind of like a notifications button. I, I forget what it says. I think it says maybe notifications. And uh, um, on there, you can tell it to always get uh, the live video notifications from me. So that, that should do the job. Uh, if not, you know, Facebook kind of works when it wants to and doesn't when it wants to. But uh, if, you, if you forget, then you can just set an alarm on your phone for 8.30 uh, Central Time. Because that's when I'm here, 8.30. But man, you guys, so my parents came back with us after Thanksgiving, and uh, we got to go to the Viking Packer game with them yesterday, and that was super fun. I had, I've never been, well, first of all, I've never been to the, the new U.S. Bank Stadium. So uh, I'm here in Minneapolis, and that is, that's where they had the Super Bowl last year. Um, at the new U.S. Bank Stadium, and I didn't get a chance to go in it last year, but I got to uh, try it out. I got to go yesterday, and it it was fun, but man, it was packed, and we had to wait outside forever to get in, but it was so much fun, even though Packers lost, but oh uh, well. <laughs> but yeah, so that was super fun. I had a great uh, Thanksgiving with family and then got to go to go to the Viking Packer game. Oh, and it was also it was my first time at US Bank Stadium, but it was my first uh it was my first my first uh NFL game <laughs> going to it in real life. So that was neat. Yep, it's covered, Gretchen. But it was so silly. So you think you're going into a stadium that's an indoor stadium, but they make you wait outside to get, like, metal detectored uh, for an hour outside in the, like, 10-degree weather. So uh, there is some poor human planning um, at that stadium yet. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know. You know, you make a fancy new stadium and you'd think you'd figure all that stuff out. Uh, I'm using, it's kind of like a tapestry needle. So I'm, I'm, it's actually still sharp. Um, this is, it's kind of like an embroidery tapestry needle. It, I am using a sharp point, pointed needle though. Uh, sometimes if you try using like a cross stitch needle, uh, they have a blunted point and then it's just a little bit more difficult to go with, go through the... Uh, go through the fabric. So this still has a, a sharp point on it. I like it though because it has a little bit bigger of an eye. Gretchen, it's not Homeland Security. It's like NFL security. All right, so this one, since I'm the arc is going the other way, I'm going to have this go the lower end. I'm going to go to the point of the ear, and then I think I'm going to go back and get the paw and everything because uh, points are kind of a good uh, stopping stopping point uh, because you have to change direction. So I think I'm going to stop there and then I'll be able to come back down and get uh, the little eyeballs, the face. Oh, are those the same color? Oh yeah. So those look like uh, she used the same color. Just the, the um, whiskers are a different color. So I'll come back in later and do the whiskers, but I'll, I'm going to stitch to this point, go back, do this paw and then get these eyeballs and nose and but then I think we will be out of thread and we'll try, try a new one. But yeah, so for this stitch, I'm going to go underneath because that's the direction of the line. It's like an underneath of a U arc instead of like an N arc, I suppose. And now I'm going to go back up. I think we can get this in two more stitches. So again, I'm not using a hoop for this. Uh, for uh, One reason is that uh, the designer is encouraging you to try, uh, I'm going to do this one last stitch here, is encouraging, encouraging people to try doing uh, 
these types of stitches where it's a, actually a little bit easier to to not use a hoop and it, it's because we're using the sewing method and the sewing method is where you go down and up in the same motion instead of like going down pulling your thread all the way through and then coming back up that's the stabbing method the sewing method is when you just go down and up and then you do the next stitch so uh, the stem stitch is really good for that and also all these uh, dotted lines these um, Oh my gosh, I just totally forgot what these are. Oh, running stitch. <laughs> totally forgot what those stitches were called. All right, so I am uh, uh, I'm at this point here, so now I'm going to jump. It's a good stopping point. I'm going to jump to this this paw. Yeah, it's kind of nice without a, a hoop. It's just something different. Uh, I am kind of using my fingers as a hoop, so I am, I'm holding the fabric. I'm kind of stretching wherever I'm stitching in between uh, my thumb and my forefinger and then the back is just kind of kind of grabbing it uh, like that as well so I can keep keep moving basically all right I'm going to come back up at this paw and now this whole paw is kind of I'm going in this direction so it's this under this shape like I got to go underneath and over. So basically I, I want my um, thread to be that shape again. So this time I'm going to go under. But yeah, sewing method is when you go down and up right away. I think this uh, the stem stitch here is one of the most traditional stitches. You know, if you if you get some... If you have some old dish towels that have been embroidered or you find some at a at a thrift shop or something, chances are they may uh, be stem stitched. Oh, your daughter came over and made breakfast with her family. This sounds nice, Robin. Ooh, I might just have enough thread for the face and stuff. So now I'm going around the this paw part, which is a pretty tight curve. I'm going to make my stitches just a little bit smaller so I can make sure that it looks like a circle and not just like a bunch of points. So this is kind of a loose stitch. Like from the top, it looks um, it looks pretty solid, but if you're looking at it from the, from the side, you can see kind of it bumps up the little stitches. That's going to be fine. I think this will all relax and meld together a little bit once it's been, once it's done and in place. Uh, I did get to see my mom's version of, of this, uh, this kitty and uh, she quilted it. Uh, she quilted it down the sides as if it's a actual quilt, which I just really love because this is, I mean, it's a cat laying on a quilt, right? And then she stitched around the kitty. So the kitty jumped out a little bit. And then she put like some little zigzags in the back of the kitty, the kitty's back. Um, so it would uh, look like a little tiger kitty. And I thought that was so cute. So I'll probably do something. I'm going to put this one above. Um, I'll probably do something kind of similar to that once we get that far. So I'm guessing there'll be a new block this week, or maybe another new four blocks. We'll see. Uh, the new blocks for this are released on. Um, they're released on. Let's see on Thursdays, and last time there were four new ones, and ooh, we'll get this. We'll get his little nose first, and this time, actually, let's do this eye. This time I'm not sure, so we'll see. Maybe there'll be, uh, maybe there'll be four new ones, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> right now I'm trying to work on getting some of these older ones done that I that I'm not done yet. All right, I think yeah, okay, back stitches for the eye. So I think this one's just going to be one straight line for the eye. Oh, next time I'm at home by my parents, I'll um. I'll be sure to grab a pic of, of my mom's block. I need to see it again, too. All right, 
I am putting like a long stitch behind it, like I'm jumping from one eye to the other. So you might ultimately be able to see this uh, thread through, but not enough to make me care enough to um, try and do this eye separately. Oh yeah, that's right. There was a bonus block on Thursday. Um, but I'm I'm just gonna stick to the normal blocks because if I let myself get sucked into doing uh, bonus blocks too, then then I'll just never uh, get done. I don't think. Um, and I kind of like I kind of have my quilt planned out a little bit. I think and uh, adding more blocks might uh, mess it up. Although I could put blocks on the back, maybe we'll see. I'm gonna stick to the uh, the blocks from the book first. And then uh, um, maybe I'll, I'll be sure to maybe download the, the bonus blocks so I have them, but maybe I'll do those later for the back. All right, so that's looking good. Uh, we did all this so far today. Uh, I'm going to, my threads just maybe, I could probably get a few more stitches out of, out of the thread, but I, you know, just a couple. So I, I'd rather start fresh. Um, so I'm going to weave in this end, and then I think we'll start at this kind of inner ear part. I get up to this point uh, and then we'll do the rest of this this guy. I think going around we're kind of doing like the detail work here in the face. I'm just gonna weave it back and forth three times. Uh, once we get to the back, his back, I think it'll be good. Oh you had to clear all your quilting stuff away so you had room to eat. That's that's funny. Yep. Yeah, to do that sometimes. <laughs> oh, so I did bring, I um, I don't know if you guys got my email last week, but I am having that sale yet. So check your emails. It's going through tomorrow. But I mentioned in there that I was going to work on some projects over, uh, or, you know, if I had time just sitting around at Thanksgiving. And I was able to work on the my uh, new little doily. I started another uh, crochet doily project, so I don't have that near me, but I will get that out to share with you guys tomorrow. I'll show you. Um, I wanted to do another one where, where I make that like gradient out of the different color threads. I just, that, that was just so much fun to do last time that I, I, I wanted to give it another go. And I'm trying out a different pattern, uh, like a visual pattern, which I've never done with, with embroidery before, with a uh, crochet before. Um, so that was, that was, that it's fun so far. So I'll show you guys that tomorrow. Uh, so the quilt blocks, so these are six and a half inch blocks. Uh, well, ultimately this is seven inches right now, but I'm going to trim it down to six and a half inches. So once it's actually sewn into the quilt, they will be six inches, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to cut them to six and a half inches and then once they're sewn, you know, because you have to get rid of all the seam allowances, a quarter inch all the way around, uh, they end up being six inches. So when you do, when we measure out our blocks, we got to use that six inch um, measurement if you want to find out the final size of the quilt. And uh, so I've been sewing them in uh, groups of four. And I've been putting like a little half inch sashing, uh, half inch sashing in between, in between the four blocks. So I'll have like an extra, extra half inch here and there. I think, I think my blocks with the sashing are 13 inches when I have four with the sashing in between. And I think I'm going to have five across. Oh, you guys, I'm totally spacing out. I, Started back stitching instead. So let's let's try that again. Like this doesn't look right. Stem stitch is actually one of my least used stitches, and it's because I didn't get how to do it um, right away. And uh, I, what I didn't get was that you really have to use this sewing method. Um, sewing method where you go in and out in the same motion. Uh, and I couldn't just get that because I'm, I'm used to the stabbing motion of embroidery. So it didn't, I didn't get it until I realized, oh, I got to have a loose fabric and, and, um, you know, not in a hoop 
or loosely in the hoop and I have to go in and out at the same time. So this is what I was doing. I was, I was starting my stitch. I'd, I'd go down here and I'd stab, I use the stabbing method. I pulled all the way through and then I'd have the hardest time coming back up uh, in the middle of that last stitch, like I would, I would stab through the stitches or I'd be on the wrong side or, or something. And that's because I was trying to stab um, up through the back. So they would turn into split stitches instead of the stem stitch. So when I, when I finally discovered, oh, if I use the sewing method, if I go in and out right away, then my thread, this underneath thread is in the right spot right away. Um, I'm not accidentally stabbing it, and then it all of a sudden just just works. Um, so once I figured that out, I, I was like, okay, this is how you do the stem stitch. So I, I don't have as much practice on the stem stitch as I do all these other stitches. And, I, and I'm used to doing back stitch um, for, for most of my outlines, so I think my brain just kind of went there. All right, I think I got a little bit of thread like a little, like a quarter inch, or a, I mean, a, like a sixteenth of an inch in between this last stitch and here, so I don't have to do any special things on the back to get started again. I'll show you what I mean uh, when we get up here. Um, all right, we're gonna do this little guy, just cruising around. Oh, you really want to learn how to crochet? You love the doilies. Oh, you're working on the afghans. Oh man, I, oh geez. Do any of you guys get the Pearl Soho newsletter? I swear, every time I get that, Pearl Soho is a, it's a yarn and fabric store in New York City and uh, they have an online presence and everything too. And, and uh, if you want to see some beautiful, beautiful things, um, pretty often you should sign up to their newsletter, but I don't know what they do. They take the best photos or something, but all their stuff, all their like newsletters are always so pretty. But today there was a newsletter where right now they're having a sale where it's a pretty basket, like a pretty like seagrass or, or whatever that's called. Those that kind of like woven basket uh, that's kind of like loose. Um, but it's a woven basket with um, loads of yarn in it that they, they hand selected, but it's all different kinds. So they'll, they'll pick a color. So there's like a, the teal group or something. Um, and it'll be all different sorts of teal or close to teal yarns, but there'd be some mohair and some really thick chunky stuff and just all different types, but all together, they're just beautiful. They're like the sim a same color scheme. And I just stared at that today. I'm like, oh man, I would love to order one of these for myself, but I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Um, but I would have loved to make an afghan out of that because then you can have all these different textures because you have the little mohair and then you have, you know, like I said, the chunky wool and the, just like all of it, little like tweed looking one. It was just all so, so pretty and would make the, like the prettiest afghan. All right, I'm going to jump down here, do these, this little ear. I'm hoping we can cruise around um, the back of this, this kitty yet. I'm gonna have to get more floss soon, I think. I think we can do this in two stitches. But yeah, I'd love to do uh, a, a quilted, or not a quilted, a crocheted afghan. I've never done a um, granny square afghan, and I'd really love to do that. And it, you know, gr the granny square quilt that I wanna, I wanna do uh, is that I wanna do on here with you guys. That's kind of like an homage to the to the granny square, to the granny square. Um, uh, crocheted afghans, and I think that's neat. All right, so I, I went back to this point, but I can't really start from the same point. Like I need to, I need to come up through the same place that I just put the the um, the thread through. So this is um just like a trick 
for the stem stitch when you're when you're changing directions and stuff. So I I went into the hole for my last stitch and it, I need to go back to the back and then catch a few stitches, like catch the catch the last stitch before this stitch. So I'm going back a little bit farther, like a stitch length back here and just coming around. It's kind of just looping, looping the thread underneath and hooking it back. And then I can go back through the, the same hole and uh, um, it'll just catch. I won't have to, the thread's not gonna come out. So then we're ready to switch directions. All right. I like going left to right again, so I have to keep keep moving around. We'll do it again. We'll do it again here. Yeah, you know what? It would be kind of fun to do a granny square <clears throat> little crochet project here. I'll have to think about that because that'd be an easy thing that we could probably do in an evening. And then you could just keep going on your own, just making a ton. All right, so here again, I'm gonna go into the hole here, but I, I need to come back out that same hole to start the next line. So I'm gonna have to go to the back, weave it through the stitch that came before, and there we go. So uh, now um, I've grabbed onto that and it won't come out again and I can come back up through that same hole. There we go. All right. Um, now again, I'm gonna do the uh, the uh, have my thread above because the arc of this kitty is going kind of above. Like if we have a if we have a straight line, you know, it's going above like that. An above arc versus an underneath arc. So I'm gonna go above with my thread. I'm gonna cruise along this edge. I think I'm going to try and do a little bit bigger stitches. I think you can do that when you have more gradual curves. Yeah, so a little bit bigger stitches. I don't want them too big. I don't want them to be toe catchers. Um, and I think we're going to run out of this thread before we get through the back. So I'll show you how to just come back up and, and start fresh with a new piece of thread. We're, we're getting there on, on this little kitty, little Chad. So I don't know if you guys, like I said, saw, saw my little Chad picture up on um, the Chad kitty up on the penguin and fish page, but uh, like I said, he's he's not really a brown kitty like this. He's a like a black and white tiger kitty, but he has um, a, a white chest and uh, he has just a tinge of like this exact color, uh, kind of warm brown. And so this color just reminds me of Chad because we used to have another cat. Um, when we were little called named Caddy and uh, uh, he was a, a black and white tiger kitty and um, but without any of this brown in. Leslie we did so our big painting that we that we got came today they delivered it uh, the school came over and and delivered it today not the school but some guys from the school and uh, uh, we have to, we're, I think we're going to put it in the living room. So uh, I think it's just barely going to fit. We're going to make it work because we think it'll look cool in there. Um, so once it's up, it's just kind of laying against the the um, bookshelf right now. So you, you can't quite see it. But once it's up, I'll, I'll um, flip the camera and show you guys because you'll be able to see it from, from here. Uh, I think it, you know, it might fit better in uh, my husband's office, which is just one of the bedrooms. Um, downstairs here uh, but in the living room where it's gonna be kind of crammed but in the in the living room I think it'll look a little bit it'll just be we'll get to see it more often so uh, we'll have all this art crammed into our living room but I think you know maybe if we just decide that that's the look look we're going for it'll it'll be okay
So, all right, I am going to start a new thread. I don't know if we'll make it all the way around this guy today, but I'm hoping we'll get close. I'm gonna stick with, I'm gonna stick with this one until uh, Thursday. Wow, this is a tangled mess. Um, I'm, I'm using a thread for my scrap thread bin. So whenever I'm, you know, when I'm done with a project, I'll just throw it in that bin. And in this case, it's, I just threw it in as a mess apparently. But that's how it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a stupid knot here. Let's get that figured. More of a knot, but I think we're good after this. It's always nice to use up, use up the scrap thread though. Sometimes you find like fun colors that you wouldn't have normally used to. All right, so again, to separate a thread, I'm just um, holding all the thread, all six strands in between my fingers here and I'm separating, I'm isolating one and then pulling it out. It looks like a crazy mess, but once the strand is pulled all the way out, it all kind of releases and relaxes. So I just kind of run my hand through it again, um, but it's all perfectly relaxed after that. And then, um, so even when I'm doing stitching with more than just one thread, uh, I'll, I'll pull each strand out individually. The threads just kind of lay a little bit flatter and Oh, Suzanne, I hope you feel better soon. It's never, ever, ugh, it's always just the worst. It's that time of year. All right. Let's weave in the backs again here to start our next thread. Oop, almost pulled it all the way through. Oh, Leslie, that sounds so sweet. Leslie says she's been busy making memory bears for her sisters out of her mom's clothes. Ugh, that is just such a beautiful idea. Yep. Are we secure here? I think we will be once we start stitching. Okay, um, so I left off on this stitch here. So I'm just gonna kind of lift it up a bit and I'm gonna come up in the middle of that stitch um, as if I was just, um, my thread was kind of continuing. So I just need to come up the middle and then, then we're off again. But let's just rearrange my hands again. My, my finger uh, hoop. And we'll keep going here. Around the back of Chad's back. Oh, it feels funny when I'm holding it. I'm doing something awkward. There we go. Maybe I just have I'm, my threads long and just getting snagged on stuff. I think that's my real problem. I cut my thread a little bit longer than I than I usually do. I usually like to stick to, you know, maybe 24 inches or so. I think I did it a little bit longer. I was getting greedy. Now I'm making a mess. Yeah, I can't get my hand grip feeling right anymore. No, oh, well. What happened? That happens about this time of the night, a little after the nine, uh, a little after the nine o'clock point, and then, then my uh, coordination kind of goes away a little bit. Oh, I should embroider Chad's name on the square. Maybe I will. Ooh, maybe um, maybe I'll uh, free motion quilt uh, Chad's name on it. That'd be kind of fun. Just put like. Just maybe right in his back or something. It can look like uh, just like some of his stripes or something. I should write Chad though on. That'd be nice. Yeah, Linda, I'm I'm totally gonna do that. Remind me. Um, I'm gonna try and remember, but remind me 
if you remember, um, once we start quilting this. It'll be a little while before I'm before I'm quilting this guy. Cause I only have I only have this one and one other one done, and I need four done uh, to do another to do another four patch of them together. Oh yeah, okay, so Valerie just said that Selkie, um, I think they're Selkie.com, Selkie of America has their 12 weight thread um, on for 40% off, uh, probably for Cyber Monday here. So that's what I'm using to make make my doilies lately, just to, I don't know why, just it's so fun. It's the Selkie Petites. Uh, so that's that's kind of their name for their for their 12 um, for their 12 weight thread. And you need quite a few, like that that green doily that I made, that used nine spools of their petite thread. Um, I, I think the doily that I'm making now, um, I'm not sure it'll take take that much. It obviously depends on the type of doily and, and you know, I, I don't even know how you'd calculate how much you'd need for sure. Uh, I just happen to have a bunch on, on hand. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, Nolene, just like, Chad. Oh, I think it's totally going to look like stripes. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. That was a good idea, Linda. Oh, I'm excited for that. All right, his little back is done. We'll cruise around, see how far we get on his little feet and legs. Maybe we'll get him done. That'd be pretty nice. Ooh, if we get it done, if we get Chad done here, um, well, I gotta do his whiskers, so maybe tomorrow, let's pretend we get this done tonight, his this uh, little tail and back legs area. Um, then tomorrow we'll do the little whiskers real quick and then we'll get a fuse the fabric pieces on. So uh, if you guys haven't seen this block yet, uh, there's actually little fabric pieces that go on here too. And we have them all set and ready to go. We just um, haven't fused, fused them on yet. And then there's another one that goes up here. So we'll fuse those on. Ugh, look how sweet that is. Ah, I'm excited. Uh, and then we'll start stitching a blanket stitches. So we still have to do the blanket stitches around, uh, around these pieces once we get them on. But we're putting those on last because um, it's a it's raw edge applique and we're handling this fabric so much that if we would have done the raw edge applique first we would probably rough up the edges a little bit more than what we'd want just from handling it so much all right so once we get to this this inner curve i'm gonna switch and i'm gonna start um or this like underneath curve i'm gonna switch and, and have the thread come underneath instead But until that point, I'll, I'll stay on top here. My next stitch, I think I'll probably switch around. All right, so now I'm gonna leave it underneath here. I'll we'll do a few stitches like that. But then I'm gonna have to switch from going underneath to on the outside again to get this outside shape. Oop. We'll get more thread here. Yeah, these little, little, little mini curves with stem stitch are a little tricky, and that's why I keep changing the direction of my loop. Because if, if the loop is down underneath here, uh, this thread coming up the middle holds it down there. If I, if I didn't have that thread there, it would just be a straight line from this point to this point. But by popping the thread up in that direction, it is um, holding it in place. And actually, oh yeah, this is going to start going the other direction. Oh wait, no, it's not. So I'm confusing myself. So it's still, well, wait a sec. It's going underneath here. Yeah, it's going to go out again there. So I'm going to have to, this will be my last one in this direction. Yep. And now I'm going to have to switch to the other direction again, because it's an outer bump now. So I, I flipped my thread up to the top again. Oh, congrats, Debbie. You finished the uh, 
pineapple. Robin, you're working on the ticker tape. Oh, that's one that I haven't started yet. So, uh, like I said, on, on Thursday, they released, they released, um, or a couple Thursdays ago, they released four new blocks instead of just one. And I have not, that was, ticker tape was one of those, and I have not, not gotten to that one yet. Oops, I just, just hit you guys, hit the camera here. I'm going to, um, I have these little paw little dudes to do. I think I'm going to wait till I get to another stopping point to do those. Like, um, cause it's just, it's just easier to keep going, um, with the stem stitch until you finish your line. So I'm going to go up to here and then I'll probably just go back and do these little feet and I might, um, I'll, I'll probably do the same thing. I'll, I'll finish the line here, do these two little feet. Um, and then jump to this point and, and uh, go back up to there, do these little feet, and then somehow get back up to this tail and do that. I like having a little bit of a plan, a little bit of a plan on where I'm going next. doesn't always work out, but uh, the other thing I could do is just make a stitch. Yeah, I'm going to come back. I don't want to stop in the middle of the stem stitch. Even though I think that's what I did on the first paw, his front paws, but oh well. All right, so this time we got an inner curve going again here, so I'm going to put this um, underneath. And there we go, it's catching, and we'll do one more stitch. Sometimes um, it's nice to do like a half stitch, so I'll come, instead of just ending it here, I'll come back up, you know, just normally in the middle, and I'll just go back in, just so that last line has the same thickness as, as these others. All right, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna jump down here to do these little paws now. Uh, I think I'm going to just weave in the backs of my stitches a little bit to get down there just so I don't have a big jump. Sometimes those big jumps just feel like they're going to get in the way. I don't know. That's just me being picky, I suppose, now. There's no real reason. I just don't want to accidentally get them caught on, on something. Ooh, this little... I should have maybe done some smaller stitches around, around these feet. The stitches are wanting to cross over the arches a little bit, but we're going to just deal with it. Okay, now I'm going to just jump up to this next but where we're going to start next, there we go. And again, I, I like going from left to right, so I'm going to reposition myself. Oh, Irene, I definitely found the pineapple block to be a challenge as well. And especially, I, I did the pineapple block with a needle turn applique. I think that's kind of what, yeah, it was a needle. That's what the designer did it as. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll try what the designer did. And woo, yeah, that, that was a... It was a good challenge, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of needle turn. But I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Bev, I think um, for quilting this block, I think I'm gonna copy my mom. I, I, I love what she did. So all she did is she kind of stitched in the, in the ditch, in like the fake ditch that doesn't really exist. So th this is a kitty laying on a quilt. So all she did is kind of mimic the quilt lines, which I thought was super duper clever. Um, and then uh, she traced the outline of the cat just so the cat had some definition and she put some zigzags in But I think instead of zigzags, I'm gonna write Chad in his back here just cuz that's his name and Then we'll know forever that it's Chad little Chad kitty All right, I'm going to do one more stitch this way this time. I'm gonna try and do a little bit smaller stitches around this foot here All right now I'm switching to the red being above. Little smaller stitches. I think this will work better. A 
we'll see. Maybe, maybe it'll call for being done totally different once we see it with the other blocks, the, the quilting on this. But I think, I think I might just follow the stitched lines just right next to the stitch lines as, as if it's, as if it's like a real quilt that I'm stitching in the ditch. Stitching in the ditch is when you quilt just along the line of the, the sewn seam. So that's, that's, we'll kind of be mimicking that idea here, I think. All right, finish this stitch and I'm gonna go down and do his toes again and I'll just leap down this time. The, the less, or the tighter stitches definitely got me that curve the smaller stitches way better than, than this. I, I forgot to make smaller stitches and they're just bigger. So my jumps of thread are bigger. It's kind of gives this crisscrossy effect versus this nice curve, but I'm gonna live with it. I don't think I'm gonna have enough thread for his tail. We might have to end it right here. And grab another piece of thread. Ah. Eh, we have a little bit of thread yet. I'm going to keep going. I do think I'm not going to make it, but we'll try. This is going to be a pretty big leap, so I'm going to kind of weave through the ends to get up to his tail line. <laughs> I'm with you, Gretchen. <laughs> Miss Romaine. Miss Romaine lettuce. All right, we're going to go up around here and end up at the other side of his tail. Yeah, definitely not going to have enough loss for this. You can do the same thing, start and then come up kind of in the same spot so that the first stitch has the same kind of double thickness as the rest of it. The stem stitch, since you're putting like two stitches next to each other really, kind of overlapping them, this one strand of floss gives the, it has the appearance of two strands of floss because they're next to each other and whew, I almost pulled the thread out of the needle. Oh, that's a good sign that I should probably switch threads. I think I'm gonna, this is gonna be my, my last stitch. I'm just going down to the back here. We'll come up. There again, let's weave in these stitches. Just go in the back of this leg here. Didn't quite make it. It's always nice that, uh, it's always nice when um, you have just the perfect amount of thread, but that did not happen this time. All right. And here we go, use my thread again. I'm gonna just grab another single thread from here. So I'm just gonna isolate, isolate one thread and um, hold, pinch the rest in my finger. I don't have to pinch hard, hard or anything, just, just holding it in place. Oop. Pull that one strand out and the rest will just kind of relax. Um, and there we go. Got our little thread again. Ooh, I really want to finish this kitty. We're almost done here, you guys. All right, let's weave in the end here. We'll pick up where we left off. trying to catch as many little bits of thread as I can when I weave in. It's a little difficult when you're only using one strand, but this will all be sewn into the quilt. I'm not really worried of, about this coming out. There we go. All right, flipping around. Right again, I'm gonna come up in the middle of this last stitch. So I'm gonna kind of pull up the stitch, come up there. All right. Let's finish this guy. I'm gonna have to do real tight 
uh, small stitches around around his tail here. Probably gonna start making him a little bit smaller now. I'm kind of using my finger to hold the thread up above out of the way too. That's that's kind of helpful. You can help me a little bit. Yep, now I'm getting these stitches a bit smaller. Here's where I'm going to start really making them small. Oh, we did not lace up turkeys either with the turkey lacers. My mom spatchcocked the, the turkey. That's when you, um, I think you cut the backbone out and it, and it lays flat. It was yums though, so good. Ooh, I did make up, I made the cranberries. I always like making the cranberries. I like stirring them and you stir them and then they start popping and popping open and I don't know, that's satisfying for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> uh. All right, here I'm doing real little stitches around this little tight little arc here. Oh, Catherine, yep, I am back. Back from vacation tonight. Yesterday was kind of the last of it. My parents, uh, I'm not at my, uh, not at my parents anymore. I went to my parents for, for Thanksgiving, but they came back here with us and we all went to the um, Packer Viking game, which is super fun. We're gonna get one more stitch this way. Ugh, no, I think I gotta go underneath. There. <laughs> Cranberries popping is almost like popping bubble wrap. It is, it is so satisfying. I just love making it. And it's just so yummy. It's like the perfect fresh, um, you know, the fresh cranberry sauce with real berries and stuff. It's just such a good compliment to turkey and stuffing. It's just, I like dipping my turkey in it. <laughs> oh, we use a, a bigger pan. Oh, did it just splatter everywhere? I think we just use like a little saucepan. Put a little bit of sugar and um, a little bit of water and a little bit of orange juice. And I think that's all we did this year. Oh no, the best thing. If you're making fresh cranberry sauce, it's a little late now, but there's Christmas still. Um, when it's close to being done or like it's done, like right before you're going to let it stand and cool down, put some pomegranate seeds in there too. Um, and just stir them up in there. The pomegranate seeds give it such a good little crunchy burst every once in a while. Oh, so good. So that's my tip for the night, people, is, is put pomegranate, uh, pomegranate seeds in, in your cranberry sauce. Yum, yum. Oh, man. I don't think I brought any cranberry sauce home. That'd be really good right now. I should just go make some <laughs> just because I'll have to go see at the, if there's um, cranberries left at the grocery store. Maybe I will just go make some. There's, I mean, it, just the texture of those, those pomegranate seeds in there just really top it off. All right, this is gonna be my last stitch. Oops, caught my edge of my fabric. All right, and then down to the back. Let's see what Chad looks like here. Aww, kitty. I like him. All right, I'm going to weave in the ends. I think we got that arc of the tail pretty well there. Uh, tomorrow we'll come in and we'll do the little whiskers. And then, yeah, then we will uh, we'll 
we'll fuse our little extra little fabric bits to this. Man, we're gonna get this block done even soon. This is one of those ones that I thought would take forever because, you know, there's just a pile of embroidery. Ooh, I'm, I'm liking that we're ticking off these, these blocks here. I do have, I think, four other, at least four other unfinished ones <laughs> besides this one. We're gonna have to have a uh, foundation paper piecing week too, I think, soon, because I have I have two that are foundation paper pieced. It'd be nice to just get those done. Oh, Patricia, good. I'm glad they're helpful. And yeah, if you guys ever have any have any questions about you know anything we're doing here, ask away. Um, and if I don't answer, I probably didn't see it, so you can just ask a ask again, or someone here might be able to answer too. Um, all right. There we are tonight, and uh, yeah, so tomorrow we'll get in these little whiskers, like I said. Maybe we'll use like maybe the little pink again. Ooh, this orange, the orange would be pretty too. Maybe we'll do the orange, like like down here. I like the orange. We'll do that, and then we'll fuse these fellers on. Wait, this one goes up here. <laughs> little puzzle. There we go. That's how that will go. I'll show you guys. I'll get a little higher so you can see see the block from a little farther away. But yeah, so we'll we'll fuse those on and then we'll start our blanket stitches. I don't think we'll finish the blanket stitches around uh, all of these, but uh, I think we'll we'll get a good start. So the, here's what I'm meaning by the blanket stitch. Here's the here's the um, the sample one. So here are these stitches that are around the piece. It kind of holds it in place. That's what we'll have to do after we after we fuse it down. So, all right, guys, awesome. I am going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. I'll show you guys what this looks like. All right, hello, hello again. A little crooked here. <laughs> but here is the little Chad block, little catnap block. Oh, from far away, you can really see the kitty there. That's what I wanted. I didn't want him to jump out too much. I wanted to still feel like part of the, the quilt, but I still wanted to see him. Oh, he's so cute, little kitty. I love him, little Chad. I'll think of Chad every single time I see this quilt now, so that'll be nice, especially if we write his name on his back with the quilting. I love that idea, so we'll have to do that for sure. Uh, when we get that far. <laughs> like I said, I need at least two more finished blocks for that to happen. Maybe we'll, maybe on Thursday there'll be some quick easy ones. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but all right guys, uh, it's good to be flat, good to be back. It's been really nice uh, seeing all y'all pop up in here again and chat with you and I will be here for the rest of the week. Uh, assuming we don't have any technical difficulties. So awesome guys. Uh, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. I think I'm a little behind on getting movies up there. So I'll try and get caught up on that. Uh, and I'll be back here tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. So have a great night and I'll see you then. Good night.